Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week, I want to share with you a tutorial on making these cute makeup bags. I have been having so much fun making them, and I've made a few different sizes and a few different designs, but I've really narrowed in on this size bag that I just absolutely love. It's all fully lined. And I can't wait to show you how fun and easy they are. So I was down at our local shop ish that we have in town that I sell a few items at. And I always love to ask Sharon, what are some ideas for some more projects? And I showed her a purse I made and she really liked that. That'll be an upcoming tutorial on a crossbody bag. But she also mentioned makeup bags. And she really liked the idea of using the outdoor or the more canvas type material because they hold up so well. So that's what all of these bags are made of is a, it's like a broadcloth, an outdoor um, type fabric, and they hold up really, really nice. And then I had so much fun just grabbing a few charms and I'll give you some close up views. Each pull has a um, little charm on it, just adds a little bit. So I thought these would be so fun for people to make for gifts or something that you might want to sell at a little store that you've got, or maybe you're doing some upcoming Christmas bazaars, anything. I just love them. And so I've been, as you guys can see, I went to um, Joann's, my um, future daughter-in-law and I went to Joann's and we just went crazy going back by all the upholstery material and looking at the the outdoor fabric and so these are just a few that i've made so far so i'm hoping you stick around and i'm going to show you one how i put together my um pattern because i want to show you guys how you can alter it make it bigger or make it smaller but it gives you a really good idea of how i um, put this pattern together and then I'm gonna show you exactly how to make them. And I've got a fun technique. I don't know if you guys have ever used zipper tape before. So it's something that I tried out on this bag so I didn't have to pin my zipper in place when I was getting ready to sew it. So if you've never used zipper tape before, you might wanna stick around and check it out also. But hey, before we get sewing, I wanna make sure that I thank you guys all for stopping by my channel. I love doing these tutorials and I'm always looking for ideas for more tutorials to do. So in the comments down below, if you guys could leave any comments on other tutorials that you would be interested in, I would love to put something together for you. And hey, if this is your first time stopping by, make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. We try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second, I'm gonna get my camera and you'll change. I'm actually gonna meet you over at my sewing table. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put together your very own pattern piece. And then we will get sewing. Let's start by drawing out our pattern. So a couple things you're gonna need for a pattern. I like to start with a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. I've grabbed a pen and a pencil, either one will work. I've got a ruler, and the next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to know what size zipper you want your opening to be. Now for our project, I'm gonna be using an eight inch zipper. And one thing I wanna show you guys, when you're looking at a zipper, a lot of people think this is your eight inches. And actually your eight inches is from the start of your zipper to the end. So it's right where that metal is. So we're gonna be using an eight inch zipper. So because of that, I want a nine inch opening at the top of my pattern. So what I like to do just to make it easy is I have a 12 by 12 piece of paper and voila, I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna make it 12 by seven. Now making it 12 by seven is gonna give me the basis for my pattern. So the very first thing I wanna do is I want to find the middle of my paper. And I know that's gonna be at six inches, so I'm gonna do that at the top, oops, and I'm gonna do that at the bottom. So I'm just gonna mark my six inches. And then, since I know I want a nine inch opening, I'm gonna take my ruler at 
four and a half inches and I'm gonna place that right on that center piece. And then I'm gonna mark at the zero and at the nine. And I'm gonna do that at the top and I'm gonna do that at the bottom. So, so far so good. We have got our top and bottom points marked. Now our pattern comes to a slant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure down five and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna mark right at the five and a quarter, okay? Make a little mark right there at the five and a quarter. And I'm gonna make another mark on this side right at five and a quarter. Then I'm going to draw a line from the top point to the bottom to where I just marked that. So I've got my first side and then I'm going to mark my next side. So we have got our sides done. So now what we're going to do is we are going to measure up one and a half inches. And sometimes I like to use the grid on my mat here so that I know my paper straight. Okay, and I'm gonna go up one and a half inches. So if I keep my ruler straight, I know that I'm at one and a half inches and I'm gonna make a mark. Okay, and at one and a half, and you know what? I messed that up, you guys, because I was supposed to make that one and a half inches mark right with my bottom mark. So let's redo that. And we're gonna do that at one and a half inches. So I've got that mark. And then I've got my one and a half inches right here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect those. And there is a sl slight slant here. And then I'm gonna connect my bottom ones. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. and I'm gonna connect right there. So right there, we have got our pattern all done. Now, just so you guys have got the dimensions, this is going to be, and you know what? This is where I'm gonna take my pen, so this will show up a little bit better for you guys. This is where my bottom is nine inches, and my top is nine inches. Okay, so I've got nine inches and nine inches. This is five and one quarter inch. And this is five and one quarter inch. And this is one and a half. And this is one and a half. So we have got our pattern all done. We'll cut that out. One thing I like to do when I'm doing my patterns is I like to add reference. So what we just cut out is what we're gonna use for our uh, fusible fleece. So I say fleece equals two. So I'm gonna do two pieces of my fleece. And then my cover fabric, so the front part of my, front and the back of my bag, cover fabric, I'm going to cut out two, but it is going to be about a half inch larger all the way around. And you'll see what I mean by that when we cut it out. And then I am going to do my lining fabric and I am going to cut out two pieces of my lining fabric also. And it is also going to be a half inch larger. And I'll show you the technique I use to get that done. So there we have it. So let's go ahead and grab some paper scissors, not fabric scissors, and we'll go ahead and cut out our pattern. And then what I like about doing it on the cardstock is one, it's a little bit stronger, and now you've got a reusable pattern that you can use. 
I've seen some people getting these, you know, you can cut them out of acrylic. So it cuts really nice with like your rotary cutter. But I am just using cardstock. So there we have, we have just created our own pattern. Now, I had said this is for an eight inch zipper. If you wanted a longer zipper, increase your sizes. If you want a taller bag, increase your sizes. But this just gives you a basis of how you can put your very own pattern together. So now let's get started on cutting out our fabric and making our bag. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the fusible fleece. And I will make sure I put a link down below to where I picked up my fusible fleece. Um, and you definitely can um, get it on Amazon. Um, makes it nice and easy. But a fusible fleece is a thicker, um, thicker than a normal interfacing. And it's got a little bit of a rough side and that's the fusible side. So I like to start by cutting out that. So let's take our pattern piece we just made and we are going to use the least amount of cuts that I can do. And I'm gonna cut two of those, okay? So I've got this on the fold, right? So it's doubled. I'm gonna use my ruler and we are gonna cut this fleece out. So just cut away. And one thing, and I cut my pattern piece a little bit there. One thing you want to also have going while you're cutting this is you want to bring your um, iron up to temperature, okay? Because we are going to fuse this and it's kind of an interesting little technique. We're actually gonna fuse this to the fabric and then we will cut out the fabric, okay? So that way, when I say cut it about, um, at a half an inch more, you'll be able to see that exactly because this is gonna be fused to the fabric. And I think sometimes by doing it that way, it um, it really gives you the right, right size that you need. I might have to get my scissors out here a little bit, you guys. A lot of times I do cut this with scissors because of these angles. So let's see if we can get that all the way off. Bring in my scissors here just real quick. Might have been easier just to cut it with the scissors with those angles, but we'll get it done. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. And I'm going to move my cutting mat out of the way here because underneath I've got my handy dandy little pressing pad. So let's go ahead and just move that out of the way. And if you guys haven't seen, I've got a tutorial on how I made my pressing mat. So what we wanna do now is I have got two pieces of fabric and they are right about nine inches by 13 inches, um, but doubled, right? So this I'm gonna use as the, the top or the cover of the bag. And I've got two pieces. And then I just went through my stash to find some cute material for the inside of the bag or the lining part of the bag. So let's start off with our cover. You always wanna start with your cover first because that's what we're gonna fuse our fleece to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back up. I've got my iron all ready to go. Now I do recommend that you guys look at the manufacturer's in, um, directions or recommendations on fusing your fleece. You definitely, let's center it in the middle of our fabric. Okay, because we want to cut this a little bit bigger. And then we've got the rough side down and I'm going to set my iron on and I'm going to hold it. And then I'm going to move it over a little bit more. And I like to get it adhered on this side just a little bit and then we're going to flip it over. And I think that way I get even more of a, a good press or ad adherence to it. So I'm going to flip my fabric over and then we're just going to hold it and hold it in place because we want to make sure that that adheres to our outdoor type fabric that we've got. Now again, when you buy your fusible fleece, it is going to have instructions on it and it's going to tell you exactly what their, their recommendations are for um, adhering your fleece. Okay, but we just want to give it a really, really good press. 
And I always like to turn it over and feel like it's all attached. And then we're just gonna do the exact same thing with the other side. So we'll get that done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna double up our fabric and we are going to cut the cover and the lining at the same time, just to save a little bit of time. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my scissors to cut out that, just so I can show you. I think sometimes that might be a little bit easier. I love my rotary cutter, but in some cases, I just think a good pair of scissors um, does the job just as good or even better, depending on the situation. So I'm just making sure that I've got this pressed down really well and it's adhered to the fabric. And I'm gonna double check it on the other side just to make sure. There's one piece I feel that still isn't adhered all the way. Again, make sure that you read the instructions on the fleece that you purchase. Okay, so we've got that part all done. I'm gonna grab my scissors so I have them ready to go. And what I'm gonna do now is I am going to take my, now my lining fabric is one piece, okay? All I've done is fold it over. So I'm gonna get both cut at the exact same time. So I'm gonna lay that right on top. And now if you would like to, just to make sure this doesn't move, you can definitely throw some pins in there. Some people use weights instead of pins whatever works best for you, but we just wanna make sure that stays in place. And then what we wanna do, if you look at it with um, a ruler, we wanna go just about, you know, you can go anywhere from a half to a quarter, okay? Just a little bit bigger, you just wanna give it a nice border all the way around, okay? So this is what's gonna help when we're cutting our, excuse me, when we're sewing all of our seams. So we're just gonna go ahead and just try to be even. If it works better for you guys to make lines with your ruler, you could do that. Or you could do two pattern pieces and make one pattern piece just a little bit bigger um, and do it. But I do like the method of putting the um, infusible fleece on the fabric and that way you know exactly what your cuts are gonna look like. Now, I do need to cut my other piece of um, cover fabric out. I didn't double those up because I didn't want to take the chance of um, having that be a little bit different size. Okay, so we've got that all set and those ones are done. So let me get this one cut out really quick. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna make some zipper tabs and I'm gonna show you how easy that is. And I do wanna give you a close-up view of, and, and kind of tell you a story as to why I've moved to using zipper tabs versus just sewing the zipper in. Um, because, well, let me get this done and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I wanna show you a close-up of this bag of what I'm meaning by the zipper tabs. When I've made bags in the past, I used to bring the zipper all the way to the end. But what I found is there was a lot of pull on it and zippers would break really easy because you were pulling on it. So what we're gonna create are these little zipper tabs and you can see it from the other side also that there is that little gap in there, okay? And I just think that it works really nice with these bags. And so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make the zipper tab. So that's the first thing we're gonna do here now is we're gonna prepare our zipper. So just as a reminder, what we've got so far is we've got, let's unpin these so you guys can see, we have got two pieces of our front and back of our bag. Both of them have the fusible fleece, and then we have got two pieces of lining, okay? And you know what? My iron's hot. I'm just going to give that a nice press. I love it when my fabric is nice and pressed whenever I'm working with it. Okay, so that's what I've got right there. What I want to do now is I'm going to grab my zipper and I'm going to bring my cutting mat back down just so you guys can see what I'm doing. And we are going to cut some zipper tabs. 
So what I wanna do, and a lot of times what I like to do is just go back and see if I can get anything off of the scraps that I used. And I'm not seeing that I've got some that are easy to use. So I'm gonna grab my fabric back out and I wanna to get to an end. And your fabric should be an inch, excuse me, your zipper should be an inch wide, okay? So what we wanna do is we want to cut a six by one, okay? So six inches by one inch is what we want to cut. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mark at six inches right here. And if you guys want, you can just do that right there with a pen, and then you can just cut that. So that's doubled right now. I did not need doubled um, because I'm gonna cut this in half, but I'm gonna make more of these bags. So I'm just gonna put one of these pieces away, okay? So really all I need is that one piece. So let's get to work on what I mean by doing zipper tabs. So let's move our cutting mat out of the way because we're gonna do some pressing, okay? So my zipper right now is eight inches, right? And my top of my bag is nine inches. You guys can see that is just a little bit bigger than nine inches because I made it with the seam allowance, it's gonna be nine inches, okay? So what I'm gonna do is the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this six inch piece in half. I'm just gonna cut that right in half. And then I've got my iron here. I'm gonna fold in my edge there. And then I'm gonna fold in my other edge. So you're doing this on the short side. And then we're gonna fold this in half. So we've just made a zipper tab and let's double check the size of it just so you guys can get an idea here. So that zipper tab is now one inch, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that in. And one thing you wanna make sure is you're past that metal piece, because we're gonna sew on this and you do not want your machine to hit that metal piece at all. I'm gonna grab some clips out here so I've got them. Okay, so there is the first zipper tab, as easy as that. The second zipper tab, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna fold it in, and we're gonna fold the other one in. And you guys, I am definitely eyeballing this, that this is about an inch, but I know if I just bring it in a little ways that it definitely does work. Now this one, we're going to also bring in. Now this, you gotta be careful because you're gonna pull down your zipper and see how that metal is gonna hit right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clip some of that fabric off, okay? And then I'm going to lay this one down. And this one's a little bit trickier because these pieces come apart. So go ahead and put that in and we're gonna grab another clip. And then, then what we're gonna do is we'll just measure that up just so you guys see what that zipper is gonna look like. So now that zipper comes all the way out there. With our seams, it's just going to be just like the one I showed you, where it's just short of that seam, so it's open, okay? Just like the look of it. I think they look really professional. So what I'm gonna do really quick, you guys, is I'm just gonna run over to the sewing machine, and I'm gonna do a stitch right across there, and I'm gonna do a stitch right across there, and I'll be right back. So I've got my seam and I just did really close right there and I did it really close. So what you want to do now is just even up to make sure that you've got that cut exactly the same. Just trim it up a little bit. As easy as that. Now what I want to do is I want to show you guys zipper tape. So we have got, let's start with the front of our bag. First thing, let's decide, do you want the zipper going this way or do you want the zipper going that way? I personally like to have my zipper on this side when I'm making the bag, although the front and the back are the same, so it really doesn't matter. So 
we are going to be sewing this first seam for our zipper going this direction. Now we definitely could use clips and clip all along here. But what I really like is this is called zipper tape. And I picked it up on Amazon. It's um, a quarter inch quilters zippers tape is what it's called. And it's basically double sided tape. And what it is, is it is washable. So what happens is, or it dissolves. So if you were to get this wet, it would dissolve. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little piece of it and I am going to put it right on the edge of my zipper. Okay, so that is the good side of the zipper. Oops. And you guys, you do not need to use this. I just want to show you an alternative to having to pin to put a zipper in place or clip. So I'm going to peel back the, the cover of the tape and then I'm going to press this into place. And what I like is I can get it pressed right up there and I have just found that my zippers stay so much straighter. I'm going to pull that up just a little bit so I can get this nice and centered. You could definitely mark the center of your zipper um, if you want to make sure you've got it centered. I'm thinking I can eyeball that pretty well though. So that is the first laying down. Then what we want to do is we want to do one more piece. And I'm just using my scissors to cut a piece of it. And I'm going to put it on this side of the zipper. Because we're also going to put the lining piece down for us to sew this into place. So I just do that with my fingers, press it on. And then when you pull it back, the tape should be on your zipper. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lining piece. And I've got right sides together. Okay. I'm going to put that right there and I'm going to make sure that I have this exactly lined up. The more precise you are on this, the straighter your seam's going to be. And you definitely want a nice even seam because we are going to do some top stitching. So now no need for any pins here because I've got this all pressed or lined up exactly where I need it. So we're going to hop over the sewing machine. I do want to show you that I do recommend that you use a zipper foot. You don't have to, but I think you can get a nicer zipper in when you're actually using a zipper foot. Okay, so let's hop over the sewing machine and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to show you here, this is my zipper foot. Okay, and it's definitely a different foot and one of the things you can adjust it is you want to make sure your needle will go down right in those holes and you can do either left or right side for it. In comparison, here is my regular foot and you can see the difference. This gives me the ability to get up right next to that zipper. Okay, so let me get that in place and I'll show you what I mean. So the thing I like about the zipper tape here is that I don't have any clips along here. So I'm just gonna start sewing. I'm gonna do a little back stitch, and then I'm just using my zipper foot as my guide. And I can start to see and feel that zipper right there, but I know I'm going nice and smooth. And then I see my zipper pull coming up. So I'm gonna reach inside and I am going to open up my zipper pull. I'm gonna lift my presser foot, open up my pull, or pull it back I should say, put my presser foot back down and then continue sewing. Do a back stitch. And there we have it. And I'll meet you back over at the sewing table and I'll show you what we've got. Okay, so this is what we just did at the sewing machine, going straight across. What I like to do now is I come over to my pressing pad and I want to, I like to pull my lining first and I want to pull it nice and tight and give it a good, good press. Then what I want to do is I want to pull it behind 
So there is my lining and here is my bag. And we are just gonna give that a really, really good press. Now, before we do any top stitching, let's go ahead and put the other side of our bag on. So we're gonna go through the exact same process. I'm gonna take that zipper tape. Actually, you know what, you guys? I think I'm gonna do, I am gonna do this one without the zipper tape so I can show you guys both methods just in case you don't have any zipper tape. So what we wanna do is let's take the other side of the, front fabric, right sides together. And what we're going to do is we are going to measure it up. And sometimes I like to turn this way. That way I can tell that I'm right lined up. And then what we'll do is we'll grab some clips. Now the difference with the clips is, one, you've got to remove the clips as you're sewing. That's one of the reasons why I like the tape. And then sometimes I think the zipper moves on me sometimes. And so that, that makes it a little bit harder. Okay, so I've got right sides together. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to take the other piece of the lining and I'm gonna lay it right on top. And then we're just gonna clip those together. So it's really the same method as we did the other one of the layering. Now, when I open this back up, let's talk about that zipper pull again, okay? The zipper pull, now I'm gonna start sewing at this end and see what I mean by the zipper pull being there. We're gonna start sewing here. When I get back to it down about here, I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna pull my zipper pull back up. Okay, so let's hop back over the sewing machine and I'll give that a nice sew right there. Okay, so with the clips, I'm gonna remove my first clip. I'm gonna measure up so that I am right there on that fabric there and my, I can feel my zipper right there. The other nice thing to look at as a guide is where your fleece is, okay? And so we're gonna do a little back stitch and then we're just gonna sew along. Now here the key is, as you come close to a clip, and I like to wait till I get as close to the clips as possible, because otherwise sometimes the fabric moves. And I can kind of see that it's moving a little bit on me, so we'll see how we do when we get this one all done. This is why I have moved to using that zipper tape. I just really like how easy it makes it. Now I'm almost to where my zipper is, so I'm gonna leave my needle down, I'm gonna raise my foot, and I'm gonna reach in here, and I'm gonna grab my zipper pull, and pull it out of the way. Really important that you guys do that. And do a back stitch. Okay, let's hop back over to the table. Okay, so now we've got both sides done. And what we wanna do again is we wanna give them both a really good press. And we wanna line up our fabrics. And you guys, I really feel it's important that you press your fabric. It just helps get nice, nice finished seams. Be careful around your zipper for sure, but you just wanna give it, and then when we go to top stitch, it all lays just so, so nice. Now, you do not need to top stitch this, but let me tell you why I do. Sometimes when you're doing, let's look at this if the bag was done, right? Sometimes the zipper, this fabric creeps up and it wants to get in your zipper and you don't want that to happen. So that's why I like to give a top stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the sewing machine and I'm gonna do a top stitch all the way down here and all the way here. The one thing I am gonna do, I normally sew with a, like a 2.5 um, thread length and I'm gonna go up to a four for top stitching. It just, I think it lays a little bit nicer. So let's hop over there and we'll do a little top stitch. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna leave my zipper foot on and the reason being is I really like, I've got my needle on this side, I'm gonna use this part of my foot to guide a nice straight top stitch. Now, you guys can't see the other side of my machine but I did just increase my thread length to a 
And no need to do a back stitch here because we're gonna go over the top of these stitches when we put the side seams in. But one thing I really encourage you guys to do whenever you're doing a top stitch is go slow. It's so easy to get a crooked stitch. Okay, so just go nice and slow when you're going across it. And then you should have a beautiful top stitch. And again, this makes sure that your zipper is not gonna get cut, caught in that inline uh, or the lining of the fabric. So see how nice that stitch looks now? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then I'll meet you back over at the sewing table. Okay, so we've got our top stitch all done. It's kind of hard to see because I've really used a matching thread, but you could definitely do a contrasting thread here too. That really looks fun sometimes. Now, I want you guys to learn from Lisa's mistakes. The thing that I forget to do all the time is for this next step, you have to open up your zipper. Otherwise, it is really, really hard to turn your bag right side out, okay? So we are gonna put this bag together. So what we do is we put the covers together, the front and the back of the cover, and I am gonna use my clips here. Let me grab some clips over here. And the very first one I like to do is I want to match up those seams right there. So you can see that, that I've got those nice and matched up. That's gonna give me a really nice finish. So I do both sides there. And I'm really, I'm pushing everything out towards, or in towards the center, okay? Then I'm just, just so I make sure everything stays in line, I'm just gonna add some clips. Now for the cover section, we're gonna go down here, down here, and down here. We are not going to sew in these corners. We're gonna box our corners in a minute. Now for this part, again, I'm gonna line it up. Now I've seen a couple different ways of doing this. I've noticed that people have been leaving their sides open instead of their bottoms when they're putting bags together. So you can either leave a turning hole here or you can leave it on the side. The one caution I do on the side is there's not a whole lot of room to turn your bag. So, but I have made a mistake once. I just got busy sewing away and I just sewed everything together. So I did leave that part open. So, but for now, what I'm going to do is I've got a fabric pen. I am going to remind myself that this is going to be my no sew zone, okay? And that is, I just eyeball park this, you guys. So I'm leaving, oh, just about four inches, okay? So what we're gonna do, we are just about done with this bag, you guys. What we're gonna do is we are going to start, and I like to sink my needle right here. We're gonna start and sew back stitch go down, backstitch. We're gonna come over here and sew. And this is where that fleece is a nice guideline for you. So you can sew right next to it. And then same thing with right here. Now I am gonna leave my zipper foot on you guys. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna start and we're gonna go down, backstitch each. We're gonna come across here and only sew to here, only sew through here and then do there. Then, while I'm over there, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna box these corners. And we're just about done. So join me back over at the sewing machine. Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine and I am gonna remove that clip. I had it in place. And what I'm gonna do is, I hope you guys can see a good shot of this. I like to sink my needle so I know exactly where I'm at and then I put my foot down. And again, I am going to use where my fleece is, my fusible fleece, as my guideline. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch a little bit. And oops, guess what Lisa forgot to do? Last thing we did was do our top stitch. I forgot to put my stitch length back down to a two and a half. You do not want a four, um, a four stitch length when you are sewing a side seam. So I just went ahead and did that again. I'm gonna do a little back stitch and then we're gonna sew away. And you guys can see I'm going right next to that fleece. And I'm gonna go all the way through and I'm gonna backstitch. Okay, 
So I'm just gonna go around this and um, I'll fast forward through this for you guys, but you guys will get the gist of what I'm doing with this part of the bag. Okay, so now we've got that part done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna box our corners. And what I mean by boxing corners is we've got this part all nice and cut, right? I am going to match up my seams, okay? I'm gonna flatten that seam and I'm gonna flatten this seam and I'm gonna pull them together. And I'm gonna put a clip on it. Okay, and then if you pull them straight, we're gonna put a stitch right down there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all four corners. So I've got all four corners boxed, got those stitches in place. And what we want to do now, before we turn it inside out, I like to add a little bit of a press. This is where my opening was. And it just makes it so much easier to close off that opening if I give it a nice press. Go ahead and just do that with my iron. Okay, and then what you're gonna do, now this is where my problem would have been if my zipper would not have been open. I could not turn this right side out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push through, and I like to use my fingers to get the corners out. And then I'm just gonna run over the sewing machine really quick, you guys, and I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch across that. Some people like to sew this hand sew it, but I'm just going to do a quick zigzag. Give me just one second. Okay, so I just put a straight stitch on because I still had my zipper foot on, but either way works. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish pushing out my good side out and just work it a little bit with the corners. And I just use my fingers. You can definitely use a turning tool if you want, but I just do that. And then this, I just pop up those tabs we put in and see how that hole, that opening is there. And look at that, you guys. How cute did that bag turn out for us? Now, I have, I love adding little charms to my bags. And so I picked up this um, charm pack from Amazon and I'll give you guys a link to it for sure. But I have got so many different little jewels. I've got some really cute sayings that I can put on there. And what I like is when I bought these, they all came with the mini little lobster clasp. So this one says, imagine. And so I just think it's so cute to put a little tag there on your bags. Or if you wanted to give it a pop of color to bring out some of that orange in the bag, we could put a little jewel on there. So how cute does that look on the bag? So I'll give you another close up view of all the bags I've done. I've been having so much fun making them. I think these will make great gifts and I also think they're a great idea that you guys could make and sell. So how I showed you to make the pattern, you definitely could increase the size or you could decrease it. But I really like how it's got that curved and it's really nice. If I show you guys the finished dimensions, this is five and a half, and the width of the base is three inches, and then it is nine inches. So what do you guys think? If you guys like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Leave comments down below as to what other type of tutorials that you guys would like and I'll make sure I give you a close-up view of all those bags I showed you at the beginning. Here's a close-up view of those makeup bags that I've been making. As you can see, I'm addicted to making them lately. I've made quite a few. If you like this step-by-step -step tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I hope you have a great weekend.